Now, uh, based on some recap uh, from last time, I'm just uh, uh, briefly, briefly summarizing um, the insulins from last time as uh, you you're, you guys are going towards exams and 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 there is a lot of information. So the bolus insulin or prandial insulins are the rapid acting insulins. These uh, can be of various name, but just try to remember Novorapid or uh, Actrapid if you want to remember. We talked about some uh, rules uh, with regards to how to adjust insulin. So just remember uh, one unit of prandial insulin, which is the rapid insulin, can drop glucose by four millimoles. This is a rough safety net advice. We uh, do not um, uh, generalize it on 100% of people, but it works for majority of them, um, especially if they're insulin naive. Okay. The uh, rule of thumb for insulin carb uh, neutralization is that one unit of insulin can neutralize 10 grams of carbs. So if you are having a toast which can have 20 grams, that would be neutralized by uh, two units of insulin. Uh, so if you do have a patient in hospital and you they're, they're insulin naive or you're trying to give a prandial insulin, it depends on two things. You're trying to correct the glucose, they're going for surgery and their sugar is very high. Uh, you, you don't want to start them on variable rate insulin IV because they're eating and drinking. Uh, you can give them a correction if you're comfortable. The, the part of the correction dose would be uh, calculated for the meal that they have eaten and part of it would be calculated for their uh, glucose readings before the meal. And, um, and our idea is that we try to maintain target glucose of 5 to 7 uh, by giving them additional extra insulin to neutralize whatever sugar they had in their blood. If you recall, James, we did last time, and I think people didn't have time to do the calculation. So, so just uh, if you want to give it um, another go and clarify your concept. So James is having a meal. His pre-meal glucose is 14, and he has decided to have 20 grams of carbs, which could look something like this, could look something like one toast or maybe a bit of vegetables. So what are we going to do? We give him some insulin for his glucose and we are aiming to get the sugar between 5 and 7. So preferably I would say on the upper end, perhaps 6. You only give them 2 units, okay? So because 1 unit drops 4, if you're giving 2 units it will drop by 8. So it brings down the pre-meal glucose to 6. And for his 20 grams of carbs, you give him another 2 units. So his prandial, his prandial insulin dose would be four units of Novo Rapid. This is how we calculate that. Okay, let's try it with Richard again. Um, so he is having another meal. His pre-meal glucose is 20, as you can see. For that, we would give him four units. Okay, so four units, four into four is 16. So, so that's a bit, bit too much for him, and uh, he is eating. 40 grams of carbs so we are kind of we are kind of uh, going to give him four units for that so a total of eight units okay I would I think this is slightly over calculated here if you give him eight units because his pre-meal glucose is um, uh, is, is, a, is, six, is 20 so so we could perhaps reduce one unit here and that should be fine so seven should be an ideal choice for him uh, then Mrs. Ko, uh, she has got a pre-meal glucose of 10. So if we try to correct that, it works out as one unit because one unit will drop it down by four and it would be six. And she's having uh, this bowl of salad, which uh, perhaps has got uh, 20 grams or 10 grams and we're giving her one unit for that. There is no need for correction in this case because your calculated dose is only uh, two units. So these are the scenarios where we don't give a correction. I don't want you to carry on uh, with an insulin pen in every ward and keep giving correction to all the patients. We only do it when, when there is a need to do so. Uh, another uh, common scenario you may come across in the wards is the uh, hyperglycemia on a weekend. Uh, you now you're called by a nurse on Saturday, a patient with type 1 diabetes was supposed to go home. He can't go home because he had a hypo last night, hypo of 2.2, fairly severe at 3 a.m. and this is now 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning and they say he cannot go home until he sees a DSN on Monday. Why? Okay, the NHS is under stress. 
and we we need to work out okay is the patient safe if the patient is safe can they be managed in the community we should encourage that this is a very very common scenario okay so uh, this was a real scenario actually i was doing discharge ward rounds and it came across me and they actually kept the patient in and so so i went back and looked at the glucose what happened here this is a preceding day very good control at dinner the patient ate something which perhaps had some high glycemic uh, glucose sorry high glycemic carbohydrates which uh, increased the glucose significantly so this is before uh, this is friday night and the glucose shot up what happened basically was uh, the patient had a hypo at 2 a.m and this is where we are so we are actually standing here and uh, the nurses were saying that he cannot go because he had this hypo here so when i looked at the uh, insulin chart what happened here the patient had received uh, the normal uh, seven units of insulin for his dinner and then as the glucose was going high due to whatever they ate someone gave him a correction at uh, 6 p.m or so, which was only a couple of hours after his dinner and that was four units and another correction was given at 7 p.m so so four units four units so 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 you can see eight units of correction here seven units of uh, preprandial insulin and this is in a span of uh, just three hours remember novo rapid can last four hours if you are giving a correction you don't want to give or repeat a correction at least before four hours so this gentleman had a significant amount of insulin which actually led to a hypo so 15 units within one hour and he had a hypo which was completely understood which could have been avoided and it shouldn't stop these patients from going home so these are your mobile if you think this concept is fascinating or helpful to you don't forget to subscribe to our channel endocrinology and diabetes simplified i'm dr jawad bashir i'm a consultant endocrinologist who has dedicated time to make medical education simplified for my trainees if you've got any particular topics in endocrinology that you want the videos to be made, please scribble them in the comment section. Thank you.